Good morning, everybody. This is actually round two of me trying to video record myself in the first of two videos. Um, turns out I'm not very good at being a technology-based teacher. I'm better with in-person. Big surprise. Um, so I just wanted to give a really quick informative video for our parents and sisters and brothers and caregivers and grandparents and everybody who's amazing and is really stepping up into somewhat, if at all, a teacher role for these kids. I'm going to remind you that I don't expect you to be their teacher. Um, we do a lot in school that is not able to be recreated directly in an eight-hour period at home, and I understand that. And I understand this is crazy times, and I understand you guys are busy. So I don't expect them to come back and know their ABCs and meet every single goal that we've been working on for the last six months, unfortunately. And I understand that. And I am empathetic towards you guys with that. And I hope I can be of any support if needed. Um, I will continue to do my job on the teacher role, providing equipment, providing materials, meeting face-to-face. -face. I would love to do some Zoom meetings. Um, I kind of briefly talked about that on the website. Um, but Zoom meetings are where your student and I, your child and I, could meet face-to-face uh, -face on a video chat. And that would be really great for me because I miss them all so much. And it's been really hard for me not to see the kids. Um, and that also might be a time that we can work one-on-one -on -one, um, and I can kind of just catch up with your kids. Uh, but this video was to talk about how to get your child to work a little longer. Um, using positive reinforcement is what we do in the classroom um, and it is the simple idea that you first do an unwanted task and I'm going to positively reinforce you so that you're going to want to do that unwanted tasks again. For a simple way to put it, would you still go to work if you were not getting paid? Probably not. I know I love my job but I go to work to get paid. Being paid is my positive reinforcement. So we're asking our children to do work for payment, pretty much. The payment might look a little different. I don't know if I'd work for 100 Skittles a week, but, you know, some people would. So in the classroom, we often use M&Ms, Skittles, all those kinds of edible reinforcements because it's the easiest for us to access with the kids. Some of our guys, it's iPad. First work, then iPad. First work, then book. All these different things. So what are positive reinforcements? Exactly what I said. It can be Cheez-Its, Goldfish, crackers, um, tangible items. It can be a piece of paper that your kid's been playing with for the last five minutes. It can be a string, uh, one of those wiggly gross flarp things that I know I've got a hundred of in my classroom. Um, kinetic sand, anything that the child wants to work for. When do you use positive reinforcement? For everything. You use it for everything. So say they are working on using a fork. The minute that that fork touches their hand, you might be at first positively reinforcing immediately when they lift up the fork. The minute they're first holding it independently, thank you so much. Here is an M&M. I'm just going to use an example. Um, they also, too, really like that positive praise. So for more typical environments, people like to be positive praised. You go to work and your boss tells you, you did really good on coming in early that one day. I appreciated it that you were on task and you came early and you were ready to work. It's the same thing. Um, so I appreciate that you lifted up your fork. Thank you so much. And then the next day when they their fork reaches the mouth. Thank you so much. Positive reinforcement. That can also look like folding. When you're folding your laundry, I'm going to show you how I do it. Oh, I've got, got oatmeal. Here's my pretend reinforcer. I've got this oatmeal, so you need to show me now how you fold your t-shirt. Have them try to show you, and you can oatmeal's not a good one, I guess, but give a piece of it. Thank you so much for trying that. And then eventually we're elongating it, reminding them what they're doing, reminding them what they're working for. That can last a longer time frame. So when you're using technology such as an iPad or an interactive book, reminding them what they're working for, you need to pick up one, two, three, four, five first. And when they're interacting with that, you reward. You positively reward and reinforce. 
um, trying to kind of keep this short and I know it's not very short but that is how we work in the classroom um, and this is not ABA certified I am not trained in any of this this is just works in our classroom um, I should just close that this is not proven I'm not using any sort of scholarly articles to back up my ideas this is what works in our classroom with our students um, they are able to work for longer periods of time when they're reminded of what they're working for so using the language first blank first work then blank then candy then ice cream then movie then whatever the reinforced item is um hopefully that will help kind of get our kiddos to work for a little bit longer longer time frames um and also be able to do unwanted things like picking up their laundry that they've thrown on the ground for the last three days because that's what my bathroom looks like I get it. I would really appreciate somebody cheering me on and handing me Skittles every time I pick up one of my t-shirts. So that's just a reminder. Um, please feel free to reach out if you guys have any other questions. That's a lot, so no pressure at all. But I just wanted to kind of offer some how we get our students to work for longer periods of time in the classroom. Um, and I hope you guys are having luck in the in-home setting. And please reach out to me with any other questions. I miss your kids so much. Have a great day. Bye.